In the woods south of Albany, New York, a jogger makes a grisly discovery. You know, it was pretty gruesome. The smell of death overpowering the sweet scent of maple trees, and right there, underneath the fallen branches... It was a very shallow grave. And in that shallow grave, the decomposing remains of a woman. As police begin their investigation, they discover a shocking clue. Is this mystery murder victim somehow linked to the suspicious death of another woman in a house fire? There was no smoke in her lungs, which would tell you right away that, you know, she was passed away before the fire. Two strangers now bonded in blood. Cops wonder, are they victims of a possible serial killer in the making? There are uh, other missing girls that haven't been found yet. It was out of character for 23-year-old Shelby Countermine to just up and disappear. Her mother, Lori, was worried. Who knows? You know, I don't know what goes through the mind of a 23-year-old. She's my daughter. Maybe she was just wanted to be on her own for a few days. I couldn't rationalize it. It wasn't her normal behavior. Shelby was a doe-eyed looking beautiful woman with distinctive tattoos. Oh, there's so much I want to tell you about Shelby. She was a free spirit. She had a strong sense of self. She was artistic. She had her own sense of fashion and beauty. And she was beautiful from the moment she was born. She was an angel. But even angels can sometimes fall into the clutches of the devil. The devil named heroin. Lori says she learned only too late that Shelby had a problem. She experimented and then it became something that she couldn't stop. She was never able to in, um, inject herself. You know, there was other people that would do it for her. But after Shelby suddenly goes mysteriously missing, Investigators soon learned her habit had also led her down an even darker path. She had to engage in, you know, some pretty sad activities to support that addiction. It was a, obviously a dangerous lifestyle. But Shelby already had a steady boyfriend, who Lori says was aware of her drug habit. When she did use the drugs, it just was a mood changer in a way that just made her more even keeled and it made her not feel sick. Lori says at first she thought Shelby disappeared because she needed some space. Literally those first few days, I thought she was probably mad. She had an argument with her father. She was mad at me. And when she didn't come for Christmas, then we knew that something was absolutely wrong. With tears in her eyes, Lori sadly recalls the last time she saw her daughter. I gave her $20. I watched her leave. She walked down our front sidewalk. Um, it was a little flurry night, and she got into her boyfriend's car and she left. That was the last time I saw her. Was it possible Shelby simply left on her own to escape her own demons? She was last seen in nearby Schenectady. I would call every cell phone number that I had on file for her. My family, my parents put an article in the paper pleading for her. She was out there to please come home. I thought maybe for a brief moment, maybe she was pregnant and she didn't want us to know. A long winter turns into spring and there's still no sign of Shelby. When her birthday came and, and she didn't come, which is April 27th, at that point, it was, we were pretty hopeless. Her father called me on Mother's Day to say, I hope you hear from Shelby today. And I waited all day and I just had this feeling and they found her just a few days later. That was Lori's unforgettable day. The day a body was found in a shallow grave in the woods near the Hudson River in Koiman, south of Albany. Koiman's police investigator, Jason Albert, takes us back to the crime scene in the dead of winter. The three trees, is that, yeah, that's very significant. It could be another way of marking exactly where she was so that, you know, if he was to come back. He says a jogger running on the trail discovered the remains. He jogs there almost every day. Um, apparently for, you know, some time he said he was smelling an odor. He stated that the odor was, you know, really strong that day. It was, you know, getting worse, so he was kind of curious to see what it was uh, and, and ventured into the woods a little bit and, and discovered the body. The body was so badly decomposed, it took cops some work to get the identity. We found tattoos. Uh, the tattoos we did some research on uh, and discovered through uh, that missing person that, uh, you know, this is probably who we were, we were looking at. Tattoos, a young woman's body, a 
police officer told Lori it was Shelby. I couldn't understand what he was saying, you know? And then he told me what she was wearing. He described her tattoo on her foot. She had a sparrow on her foot, sugar skull on her calf. My girl was gone, and there she was. Oh, it was awful. It was a moment I'll never, ever, ever, ever forget it. Lori says the family hired a private investigator who traced Shelby's last movement. Surprisingly, the PI learns a critical detail about Shelby's final hours, and there's a man's name attached. A person that um, she, she had left with that day and, and was never seen again. Shelby's dad quickly calls the man believed to be the last person to see his daughter alive. He had uh, said to him, you know, please tell me where my daughter is. If you can help me out, please give me any type of anything. And he had said to Shelby's father, sir, I realized that I was the last person to see her alive, um, but I don't know where she is. They didn't know the last name, but they knew the first name as being Ed. Ed, Edward Merrill. A man cops are about to learn saw Shelby on a regular basis. Next, evidence in a charred body in the ember and a lost video in the vault. <laughs> is Mero really a man in mourning or is he a cold-blooded monster? She had excessive trauma to her face. Her nose was broke. Both of her jaws were broke. Her chin was shattered and her mandible, this bone here was concaved in.